Well, good afternoon, friends. Welcome to today's broadcast. Now, obviously, you can see I'm wearing my winter coat today, and it's not even winter yet, is it? Well, the Lord, he wanted me to get the message out to the USA, prepare for the upcoming winter. Now, if you're going by the calendar, you might say that there are 81 days left until December 21st. But meteorologically speaking, winter begins on December 1st, and it goes all the way through the end of February. And that's for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, the Lord wanted me to review with you today the winter storm that hit Texas last winter, what the main causes of death were, and what we can do to position ourselves going forward for this upcoming winter. And look at all of those ominous warnings and predictive programming about a dark winter going on out there. And I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful that we have a loving and a kind God. And he's sending out his own warnings, isn't he? This is the love of God. So the first question I was asked by the Lord yesterday morning was, how many people in Texas lost their lives during their winter storm? And it was called one of the worst natural disasters in Texas history. And according to an article from the Texas Tribune, 246 is the official count. Now, some, some experts place that death toll much higher. I think I even read up to four times higher. The official number of deaths occurred between February 11th and June 4th. And the figure included people who were injured in the winter storm, but they didn't die until later. And it also included bodies that were found after the storm while there were repairs of damaged homes being made. Now, the youngest victim was one years old. How sad. And the oldest, 102 years old. Now, I want to go over some of these statistics with you. Close to two-thirds of the deaths from this winter storm were due to hypothermia. And this February uh, freeze overwhelmed the power grid in Texas, and it left millions of people freezing in the dark. And that's why I'm here today. The Lord wants his people to be ready for this upcoming winter. So not only get yourself ready, friends, get your neighbors ready too. And Governor Abbott, he's insisted that Texas power grid is ready to go for this winter. But some experts aren't so uh, optimistic. They're citing that their power grid is vulnerable and there's a lack of preparedness in cities. And the other top causes of death were related to worsening of pre-existing illness, 10%. And then motor vehicular accidents, that was 9%. Carbon monoxide poisoning, 8%. We're going to talk a little bit more about that one here today. Fires, 4% of the deaths were from fires. 4% from falls. And listen, these are all preventable, friends. So today I want to ask you, no matter where you live in the USA, are you ready for this upcoming winter? expect some very tumultuous winter friends. Now, if you know someone who has lost someone during last year's winter storms, I'm really sorry for your loss. May the Lord comfort you. Let's try and learn from previous disasters and let's help one another. Let's be like grizzly bears and try to endure through this winter together until this upcoming winter passes. All right, now I want to go through some important things. Very important. You need to know the signs of frostbite and hypothermia. It can help save someone's life. My hat's slipping off here. Uh, hypothermia, it occurs when someone is exposed to unusually cold temperatures. And, you know, when Seho and I were out doing evangelism with the homeless, I do just a little rapid mini assessment for hypothermia and evaluating people for symptoms of frostbite. Now, in adults, the warning signs of hypothermia are shivering, exhaustion, or feeling very tired, confusion, they, uh, they fumble with their hands, memory loss, slurred speech, and drowsiness. And babies are especially susceptible. Now, the signs for a baby for hypothermia 
uh, their skin is bright red and it's very cold and they have very low energy. They may not be feeding very well. And if you notice any of these symptoms, take their temperature. And if it's below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the person is in an emergency situation. So you need to seek help immediately. Now, let's talk about frostbite. Frostbite is actually a type of injury and it's caused by freezing. And it can lead to a loss of feeling in the skin, uh, the color in the areas that it affects. It can turn, uh, it, it can change colors. And the areas that it can affect are the areas that are exposed to the cold air. Usually the nose, let's see, the nose, the ears, the cheeks, your chin, your fingers, your toes, and it can permanently damage the body, friends. And if it's severe enough, uh, the person may need to have an amputation. So it's a very serious thing. Now, let's talk about the signs of frostbite. It includes white or grayish yellow skin. We usually see this on the homeless people on their hands and skin that feels really firm and waxy and numbness. And if you notice any signs of frostbite, we need to get them some medical care immediately. And now there's this other topic. Don't forget, friends, about all of the clotting issues that are being underreported for those who took, uh, I'll just say on here, certain injections, all right? And uh, listen, there could be a surge in heart attacks, strokes, blood clots during colder weather because of such injections, all right? Now, three things, I, I only chose three. I mean, there's a million things that we could have chose, but three things that I want to encourage people to do now while you can and again, uh, there could be a shortage of these items. So I want you to make sure that you have a reputable carbon monoxide detector. And I want you to have some backup batteries. All right, make sure you have batteries. Carbon monoxide poisoning, it's a silent killer, friends. And you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't even see it. But every bedroom in your home, every area, a sleeping area, should have a carbon monoxide detector, all right? And every common area, and they need to be placed, you need to replace that whole unit every three to four years. Now, please check if uh, your carbon monoxide detectors are working. Make sure that when you're checking your smoke alarm, you're checking your carbon monoxide detector. And even the battery could be working. This is a serious thing, but the sensor may not work. Friends, a life uh, can be spared for as little as $15 to $20. Now, something of very uh, big importance, some of the symptoms of carbon monoxide po poisoning, they are so vague that people don't even know that it's going on. And then they put off getting attention because they think, hey, I don't feel very well, I must have the flu. And so then they wait a few more days to see if their symptoms clear up and then by then they could be dead. So carbon monoxide poisoning, it occurs when carbon monoxide builds up in your bloodstream. So when too much carbon monoxide is in the air, your body, it replaces the oxygen that's in your red blood cells with carbon monoxide. And this, friends, this is so serious. It can lead to irreversible brain damage and death. And it's produced by, by burning gasoline, uh, wood, propane, charcoal, or other types of fuel. And it can also build up to dangerous levels from a gas water heater in your home. And I wanna tell you a personal testimony about this. My sister Melanie, my oldest sister, she was very sick from this about two years ago. And she knows, she'll tell you to this day that God saved her life because she already has chronic lung disease. So friends, uh, what happened with her was uh, the pilot burner on her gas water heater, it went out and it actually was broken and we had to get her a brand new gas uh, water heater. So it's very, very serious. You need to stay on top of your home appliances. Now, improperly ventilated uh, appliances and engines, particularly in a tightly sealed or enclosed space, it may allow carbon monoxide to accumulate to dangerous levels. So listen, friends, if your plan, your uh, 
uh, you know, if the grid goes down this winter and your plan is to place everyone in the smallest room and you start lighting up those little propane heaters and that room is not vented, somebody could die. And if you think, you know, you or someone you're with may have carbon monoxide poisoning, get them outside immediately. Get them into fresh air and seek emergency medical care. First thing they're going to do when you go to the emergency room is put them on oxygen and start doing some blood work. Now, the signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning may include a dull headache, just a nagging dull headache, weakness, dizziness, nausea or vomiting, shortness of breath, confusion, blurred vision, loss of consciousness. You see how vague these symptoms are with other uh, types of medical conditions? Now, people who are at risk are those who are asleep, uh, those who are drinking alcohol, uh, pregnant moms, they are really susceptible to this, small children, the elderly, those with chronic health issues. Again, the Lord saved my sister's life, friends. We had to go and replace her hot water heater. Now, people, they can have irreversible brain damage or even die before anyone realizes that there is a problem. So doing this teaching every year is very important before winter. So you want to get them into fresh air and you want to get immediate medical care. Simple precautions can help prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Always, friends, I want you to open that garage door before you start your car. Do not play around with carbon monoxide, not even for a moment. And never use a gas stove or a gas oven to uh, heat your home. Use, use uh, portable gas camp stoves. Use those outdoors only. And use fuel-burning space heaters only when someone is awake to monitor them and when the doors and windows are open to provide uh, fresh air. Got to have ventilation. And don't run a generator in an enclosed space such as the basement or the garage. Always keep it outside. We got to have ventilation. Friends, don't take any shortcuts for any reason. I don't care how cold you are. If you have a fuel burning appliance or engines, they must be properly vented. Space heaters, furnaces, charcoal grills, cooking ranges, water heaters, fireplaces, wood burning stoves. And listen, get that fireplace cleaned every year. All right, now I have really went overboard on the carbon monoxide poisoning, but let me go on to the second tip. And you'll be surprised how many people don't have the basics, all right? Have a battery powered light source with backup batteries. Now, Seho and I, we have three different types of light sources in our home. And can you just imagine, uh, or maybe you were in Florida ahead of the hurricane, and you were running to the store to get these emergency supplies. You were involved in a mob shopping scene. So friends, get the batteries, get your emergency light source today. Does not cost a lot of money. And the third tip, this third tip is one I've been talking about for years. You need to have the ability to boil water and to cook basic meals. And listen, friends, that is so important. Drinking warm beverages and keeping your caloric intake high while your body is using up so much energy to stay warm. Now, I believe that these are three measures that people often wait till the last minute to take care of. And then they find that their batteries aren't working or that they can't make a small fire to make warm beverages. They can't even uh, heat up a can of soup. They can't even find matches to, to light a candle. So again, these are just three of the most basic forms of preparedness that I wanted to share with you today. Of course, there are millions of them and uh, even more obvious ones, of course. But if the Holy Spirit has had you watching videos on this topic and you feel that you are really more than prepared, I want to ask you today, could you please just think about your neighbors now? Be able to save others' lives by asking them if they're ready or helping them to be prepared. And it only takes a phone call, friends. So the Lord put this Bible verse on my heart to share in this message, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. All right, well, I hope this has been of help to you today. And uh, by the way, I want to say thank you to everybody who participated in Tennessee's 
statewide fasting and prayer yesterday. It was, it was really a blessing to be able to do that as the body of Christ here in Tennessee. I will talk to you again real soon, friends. Good day.